Um, my talk tonight is entitled, How to Build a Nanobot to Fight Disease. Uh, so these are nanobots. I'm sure you guys all know what nanobots are. They're these little tiny machines that fly around and shoot lasers at each other and uh, they cure diseases in your body. Um, they, they, these particular bots are flying around in your bloodstream with your blood cells. Um, of course, that's not entirely accurate and this is what the, the Hollywood illustrators would, would like you to think. So hopefully this talk would clear up a little bit about where we actually are with science and where we're going and uh, put these types of uh, illustrations in perspective. <clears throat> So the first question is, is why are we talking about nanobots? What's so great about these? And why are they kind of the holy grail for medicine in the future? Um, well, if you think about what happens uh, when, you put, when you take a pill or you get an injection or an infusion of some kind of drug, uh, what happens? Uh, and then from there, we can think about what these little, little robotic devices, how can they uh, achieve better, better effects than that? Uh, so the first problem with conventional medicine is really um, systemic effects. So this refers to the fact that you get an injection or you take a pill and you're essentially bathing your whole body in uh, this drug, that, the particular drug that you're taking, which um, is almost certainly never going to apply to every cell in your body that it gets to. So you have a lot of side effects. Um, I'll be focusing a lot on cancer. So you can think with cancer, drugs are often very toxic to different cells of your body, uh, which is why patients often lose hair. Uh, they're basically toxic to any types of uh, rapidly reproducing cells in your body. So this is one that we have at this point. Um, number two is, this is a term called bioavailability. It refers essentially to the amount of drug that's available to your cells at any given time. Uh, so if you take, take, a, take a pill or get an infusion, uh, it's marked by these arrows, which is here in the x-axis. This curve denotes the amount of drug that's in your plasma, in your bloodstream. So initially, you see this plasma concentration raise up, um, but it gets cleared then through your kidneys and your liver, and then you pee it out. It comes down and you have to take another one. So essentially your, your dose that your body is seeing constantly fluctuates up and down. So you really have to keep it within this toxic uh, therapeutic window, as they call it. So it's below the toxic level, but it's enough to, to be effective for whatever disease you're trying to treat. Um, and third, as we heard from our first talk, um, obviously cost is a big issue with these drugs. <clears throat> so as engineers, what we like to do is take all the bad things technologies uh, and make a list and then see how many of them we can solve um, and we create criteria out of the weaknesses. So criteria number one to fix the systemic effect issue uh, would be something called targeted effects. So if we target the drug to specific cell types where they're needed uh, or to local regions, we can cut down on systemic effects. And number two, um, by enhancing the bioavailability, uh, we can make sustain the amount of time that one particular Day or fusion every day or week. Uh, and third, we can, cut down on, we can potentially cut down on costs by using less drugs and better results. Um, so these are our criteria. And then we think about how can we potentially achieve these criteria. Um, and if you let your imagination run wild, you can say that certainly achieve target the drugs and bioavailability, or they make them bioavailable as they need to be. Um, and you can certainly encourage nanobots to achieve a whole lot of medicine and achieve a 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 lot of medicine. So take a step back. Uh, let's talk about what actually is a nanobot. What's the nano size of the thing? Uh, so if you imagine these kids are playing with marbles, and the kids are cells. This is a common cell about 10 microns in size. Um, the marbles would be about the size of nanoparticles. So most nano scale devices, um, which are screwing with nanoparticles, about that size range in comparison to the cell. Alternatively, you can think that these kids are now nano particulate size devices. Um, marbles would be about the size of like common therapeutic drugs, human therapeutic drugs. Um, so this is the size range we're talking about. So even though we can call them nano, nano devices, uh, they're actually much bigger than conventional drugs, which gives us a little bit over here how the design systems to uh, efficiently deliver drugs. So how do we do this? What, what types of tools are in the toolbox of a nanotechnology engineer um, in comparison to a regular engineer? So we can't really engineer to build robots um, using all kinds of tools that we know about. Um, but with, with nano things, you can't really get into a virtual screwdriver with nanobots. Um, <clears throat> so these are carbon nanotubes. Uh, they're made essentially by using Um, and basically, you can tailor these polymers to, to do a lot of things. So, what this graph is depicting 
very directly engaged part of the of the right properties and which is self-assemble. And one common um, assembly that they, they happen to achieve here is a uh, sphere. So this is referred to as a panel part. Um, so this is a kind of different way. Now here, you can kind of envision a, a polymer that has a hydrophobic portion and a hydrophilic portion. So hydrophobic meaning uh, not lightning water. Imagine if you have a polymer that has these two different regions, then they might self-assemble where the parts that don't like the water will go on the inside, and the parts that do like the water will go on the outside, and you'll have a nano particle that will float around in your aqueous environment since your body is in water. <coughs> here you can envision um, floating drugs in the center of these, and if you put targeting groups, this is an antibody which binds specifically the very specific epitopes and proteins and molecules within the body. Um, and now you have a Particle to deliver drugs in very specific tissue types. Uh, this one in particular is delivering a cancer therapeutic to a cancer drug, which is recognized by this target molecule. They're also tunable by adjusting the, the parameters of the polymer and making particles of different sizes. Um, so now coming back to our list of criteria, um, we have a little more uh, handle on what we can actually achieve rather than this nanopod. <laughs> so this is one example. Um, this is a nanoparticle made by a company called Vine. And this is essentially a polymer type nanoparticle that I introduced before. This is a cancer therapeutic drug on the inside. So this is a hydrophobic region containing the drug. And now it has these targeting molecules on the outside that actually take the drug to a um, specific tissue of choice. So we'll go into our first criteria here to um, achieve target effects rather than systemic effects. These can actually bind cancer cells. And through the nature of the nanoparticle itself, it can get into the Areas and they accumulate there. Whereas a normal drug will get in and see how these nanoparticles will accumulate there and get very high level concentrations of uh, therapeutic drugs in the region of interest and will accumulate in the tumor. Um, secondly, this part will also achieve an enhanced bioavailability. So this is kind of again, you can see when you deliver this drug solubly as you normally would, which they do in the next day, uh, you inject the drug and it very quickly gets clear from your body. But when you encapsulate the drug in nanoparticles, it stays in your bloodstream for a much longer time, which means again, much less frequent uh, doses of this drug. <coughs> uh, here you can see this, on that graph, I should put the green line down in terms or uh, denotes the base uh, bioavailability achieved by the And then thirdly, uh, they use much less drugs to achieve the same results with that So this is just um, a CT image showing that there's two troopers here. This is a cross section of a human. Um, there's two tumors which disappear now in response to this uh, nanoparticle drug. <laughs> now, we're talking about nanoparticles and nano devices and nano systems. Um, and it all seems very new to talk about as the future of medicine. But one thing I wanted to show actually is that the one type of nanoparticle that uses the same types of technology that our cells use with a lipid bilayer based and surrounding the conventional drug again. Uh, this is called Doxel, and it's actually been approved since 2005. It's, it's used, it's even a generic now. It's nanoparticles are not a Entire thing, but it's it's actually so <coughs> um, now this is kind of a we the first talk again which uh, is focused on uh, immune therapies for cancer monitor for uh, for tumor targeting cancer modulation. So this is a, a project that's actually carried out in the lab here at Yale. Um, for it's the hybrid nano system where we took a um, a nanoparticle and loaded with two different drugs. One actually a drug and one is a By using these two drugs in conjunction, we can enhance the immune system's own ability to target the tumor cell. And as I mentioned before, these particles can actually accumulate the tissues so that are going all around the tumor with your body and parts of the don't need them. Um, this should also show the effect of this in treating cancer. Another type of hybrid system that I just wanted to introduce here is it's called a thera theranosity device. So therapeutic refers to the, um, the drug that treats disease, diagnostic refers to Diagnosis. It's um, like a type of, if you get an x ray, that's for to diagnose disease. Um, so the green nanoparticles now that have um, molecules on the surface that allow them to be visualized on something like an x ray or a CT, and they also at the same time spread the disease. So here we have two top row um, is analysis to treat with a uh, soluble drug, not with nanoparticles, one is with a nanoparticle, a capsulated drug, um, and the nanoparticle. <clears throat> this image here on the surface. So you can see the tumor here in the mouse on each one. Um, with the soluble the drug kind of everywhere, um, but with the nanoparticle, you can see that the effect is that the nanoparticles actually accumulate. So you can see that the particles are getting where they need to be. And by the end, the tumor actually shrinks down and it's gone. And here you see the, the tissues are excised after the, after the experiment. 